Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. And today we have the Silver Surfer. This is a not an 80s cartoon as I thought it was. Uh, it is from 1998. It is one season long. It's, yeah, there's uh, 13 episodes. They're about 22 minutes long each. Yeah, 20, 21, 21 minutes long each. Uh, 1998. Yeah, you know why you can tell it's 1998? Because it's a mixture of 2D animation and 3D animation out the wazoo. Basically, any time Galactus shows up, and it's a lot, at least especially in the first three episodes, and I'll explain why, um, Galactus is fully rendered in 3D. It's uh, uh, his ship, his, the, the tentacles that come down and start sucking the energy from a planet. Uh, anytime he moves his mouth or the, the, cr the Kirby crackle in his eyes or the, the helmet or anything else, uh, the, the weird uh, snowy screen in his chest like a, like a busted television, <laughs> it's not getting a signal. Uh, he is fully 3D in a 2D environment. Um, of, of animation, cell animation, um, yeah, this, uh, this is, this, the first three episodes, by the way, tell the origin of the Silver Surfer. This is very different from what we got when the Fantastic, when the Fantastic Four introduced us to Galactus and the Silver Surfer for the first time in 1966 in Fantastic Four 48, 49, and 50. It's a very different story. Uh, but it still holds true to the origin-ish, uh, the, the, the heart of the origin for Norrin Rad, who, which is the real name of the guy who became the Silver Surfer. Um, I'm not going to spoil too much in case you haven't watched this or you don't know who the Silver Surfer is. You're going to want to know who and what the Silver Surfer and Galactus is, because they're coming to the MCU. Yeah, we had a version of them in the Fantastic Four sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Um, Silver Surfer was well done, and it's it's a Doug. If I can't say his last name, he's you know he's everything. <laughs> his last name, come on, Doug. Uh, my brain just stopped working. Dang it, he's been in a lot of stuff. Billy Billy Butcher, not Butcher, but uh, <laughs> Billy Butcher. No, that's the boys. Um, but yeah, he's, you know, he's Saru in, in the Star Trek Discovery. He's in a, a ton of stuff, and uh, he was Mac tonight. Uh, but that has nothing to do with any of this. Uh, Silver Server Nurin Rad is played by Paul Esselmore. Essel, 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 the lettering is so small, I cannot read it. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to make it bigger. Essembria. Essembri. Paul Essembri. Wow. That took a lot of effort. <laughs> um, we get to hear him talk a lot. Uh, we get to hear him think a lot, because there's no word balloons, like in the comics. Um, but as written by Stan Lee back in the day, and in order to emulate the uh, kind of the, the wordiness, the haughty speech, uh, often uh, attributed to Stan Lee in those early days of Marvel comics, uh, they, they really... They pour everything into the 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 wretched emotion and str internal struggle of Norrin Rad as he becomes a Silver Surfer and soars the spaceways, finding planets for Galactus to feed upon that do not contain sentient life, such as the pact he made with him in order to spare the life of his planet and those upon it and the woman he loves, Shalabal. Now, when we, uh, I'm not going to spoil too much. Also, when it comes to what's coming up, because I only know so much. Uh, I don't. I only know what they've released. I don't. I don't listen to rumors and all this sort of BS that the sites uh, uh, write up to in order to create clickbait. Uh, none of that. No. Just. Just to know that when we see the Silver Surfer, it's going to be a very different Silver Surfer, and uh, Galactus is not going to be a cloud of stuff like he was in the Rise of the Silver Surfer movie. It's going to be Galactus. Probably Gal Galactus, the big purple helmet, the magenta, or you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, um, what we get is a, a man who, uh, is part of a, a place, uh, that is, uh, it knows peace. It knows, uh, benevolent, it's benevolent. It's, it is 
Alderaan before <laughs> the destruction. Uh, there, there's no weapons, uh, and it, even at the time when before Galactus arrives, they are hosting a summit between the Kree and the Skrull, which is, of course, also not part of the original story, I do not believe. I don't remember them being in there. I just sort of remember Norrin Rad being kind of bored with <laughs> how, how uh, his world kind of was. Or am I thinking of Kang? Uh, Kang was really bored with his future life. But Norrin Rad also, they'd reached the pinnacle of everything else they could ever have on their planet. And uh, <sighs> Zenla. Zenla is the name of the planet. Um, and... Well, he, he sought to search the stars and, and, you know, explore and see more, even though he had a love of his life, Shalabal, back on the planet. Well, of course, Galactus comes along, and he is a force of nature. If you don't know what Galactus is or who Galactus is, well, there's a lot behind the scenes of what Galactus is or who, I should say. But uh, he's a force of nature. He's neither good nor evil. He is just is. He is like a tornado tearing through a southern town. He just happens and there is usually nothing you can do to negotiate with a storm you can just buckle down and do your best to run or survive but very often when he eats your planet unless you get off that planet you ain't surviving well with the help of the noble uh uh Norrin rad as the silver surfer why is he a surfer what is this why, why is a guy in outer space suddenly given a surfboard by an alien force of nature, it was the 60s. <laughs> it's, it's, it's surfing was all the rage. I don't know. Uh, was he designed uh, by Stan Lee? No. He was designed by Jack Kirby, artist extraordinaire. King Kirby, the man behind pretty much the look of 90% of the characters you know and love from the early Marvel Comics universe. If there's an Avenger you've heard of, it is, has been designed originally by uh, Jack Kirby, for the most part. Give or take a few. Obviously, uh, Steve Ditko uh, co-created Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. He was uh, the initial artist on those books. But uh, yeah, back in the day, there was a way to, to write stories uh, that's called the Marvel way. And Stan sort of just threw uh, concept and ideas and some words towards Jack, and Jack just went with it. He just started drawing out what he thought was best. And uh, by the time he got the stand, got the pages back, he's like, what is going on here? There's a guy on a surfboard. What? Uh, and so then Stan has to go back in and start putting words in the mouths of these characters in order to make the idea he had a coherent story. And that's what we get uh, in just about every early Marvel comic, uh, no matter what artist he worked with usually. And he wrote, Stan wrote a majority of the comics back then. He was listed as the writer, but in many other uh, instances, you can credit Jack Kirby as uh, the primary creator for so many things. Not to poo-poo uh, Stan's uh, contribution and just everything he contributed to uh, Marvel Comics, obviously. That's, that's, that's inarguable. But if you're looking at Galactus, if you're looking at Silver Surfer, you're looking at Jack Kirby's work. And, uh, at least visually, um, and one of the great things about this animated show, getting back to the animated show, is the fact that his fingerprints are all over this, even though he had nothing to do with it. He was gone, long gone by this point. I think he passed in 1994. Uh, this is 1998. And uh, it, it stays really true spiritually to the concept of Galactus and the Silver Surfer. Uh, but the art, uh, every background design, the, the look of Galactus, just not just, oh, he's got a helmet on, he's, you know, just the angles and everything else. It's the shading which is a very specific thing. <laughs> Kirby fans, Marvel fans know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it's it, it's the, the Kirby crackle. It's the look of space and energy and, and shadow throughout all of his work, the, line, the action lines, everything. He defined comics at one point. He defined, he redefined comics. Yeah, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, everybody else existed over there at DC, and they changed the world uh, in their own way, but when Kirby got on the scene, and he even did some DC work, of course, as well, uh, he, you can see 
uh, so much of his uh, his influence in the look of this animated series. Now, he is not the only one in this. Uh, there is a classic story written by Stan Lee and drawn by a French artist named Mobius. Not uh, <laughs> not the character from the Loki show. No, uh, this is uh, there is at least a few creatures that are depicted in some of the early scenes in the first episode. Uh, just in passing, just a passing shot. And there's also a shot, like a close-up of Galactus's head with a very small silver surfer hovering in front of it. That is taken from the cover of the classic silver surfer story drawn by Mobius. And go ask your local comic shop, look it up on the internet, on Amazon or wherever you shop for comics. Seriously, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you look at that first episode or second episode. Second episode is where that that... Mobius references there. But when you're also looking at the human Zen La looking characters, the way they are depicted and drawn, they are a mix of Kirby, but also Ron Lim. Ron Lim was was responsible. To me, it, it looked like Ron Lim. There's a number of s just sequences, the way the, the bodies are drawn, the length of legs and everything else. There's very much an influence of Ron Lim, who was a primary, who was the artist for the Silver Surfer series throughout like the 80s uh, and into the 90s for a bit. He had done almost like 100 issues, it feels like it. Maybe he, he cut out here and there, but I collected that. You know, the one with the embossed foil Silver Surfer on the cover. Yeah, uh, <laughs> those, those I used to have. I don't have them anymore, unfortunately. But um, it's, it's seriously, uh, Ron Lim's art is uh, seen in this. So the, the people who put this together were very much in tune with the look and feel of the comics. Uh, look and feel and sound of the characters. Uh, Uatu, the uh, the Watcher, is narrating throughout a lot of this, uh, and uh, what we, we we do get is not the Fantastic Four. You expect the first uh, contact with Earth would have them going up against the Fantastic Four? Nope. What do we get instead? Frankie Ray. You know who Frank? People who know far uh, of Marvel Comics uh, know who Frankie Ray is. So I won't spoil that. That's if you don't know. Not that if you don't know, then it won't be a spoiler, but it doesn't matter. She's important to the mythos of Galactus, at least. Uh, again, with only 13 episodes, the first three being spent on the origin of Silver Surfer, his subservience to Galactus, and his fight against that, that enslavement, in a sense, uh, trying to break his deal when he realizes that Galactus has taken more from him than he uh, had planned on. So um, it's it's really well paced. You get a lot of uh, neat lore that you know from the MCU films. You get to see Thanos. You get to see some eventual Guardians of the Galaxy. You get to see Pip the Troll, I'll tell you that much. If you don't know who that is, he appeared at the end of <laughs> Eternals, which you also may not have watched. I don't know. Um, you get to see Adam Warlock. You get to see, uh, I did say Thanos. Also, by the way, uh, Thanos is not, does not feel the same <laughs> as Josh Brolin. Thanos. It's, I'm just saying. It's, it's a very different depiction of Thanos. Not that it's bad. It's just a little strange. It really plays off of his... I'm talking to myself. I'm talking. Well, I'm talking to my beloved, but it looks like I'm just talking to myself. And in order, because it's a kids' show, you know, Fox Kids in the morning, that beloved has traditionally been death. It is depicted as a skeleton in a cloak, but also with a woman's shape. So, <laughs> where did the boobs come from? If you're just a skeleton, I don't know. Um, but yeah. So uh, that uh, who they replace death with is not somebody you would know, but it's it's a much safer visual choice. Let's just say that uh, we we get to see that, yeah, the Kree and the Skrull together fighting side by side for a moment up against Galactus. You can figure out how that goes. Uh, there's also a, a race of beings that recur in at least two of the episodes that aren't exactly uh, the race that I think they are. They could be, but they I don't I don't see them. They I don't know. They, they seem like a, uh, one of two different races from the Power Pack series. 
uh, from the from the late eighties. Um, it's kind of a mixture between the Snarks and the Chameleons. They're, the Chameleons are the horse like aliens that the good guys and the Snarks, as they called the kids called them. Uh, it's a very strange way to spell their name, so you just say snark. Uh, they're lizard-like, and it's just the, the shape of the legs of the aliens that make me go. I think they just sort of smooshed them together and said, hey, here's an alien race that will try their hand at fighting Galactus. So, oh, we get, we get a certain planet, let's just say, makes an appearance. Nowhere nowhere you know the the celestial head even though it doesn't necessarily look like a celestial head in that as nowhere technically makes an appearance even though it is i don't think it's called that in here yeah you'll you'll see it you'll know it when you see it uh but uh you'll you'll there's there's so many little marvel references for the for the us nerds to really love uh for the newbie this it, it can be a little arch in its in its character's delivery, it, it feels like somebody was. Well, it's, it feels like somebody was cribbing from Stanley, and Stanley liked to crib from like Shakespeare. You know, he liked to crib from King Arthur, uh, things like that. So it's it's the kind of that kind of um, righteous knight type of storytelling that. Uh, he was good at. He was good at. And it's 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 doesn't necessarily the lines don't necessarily roll off the tongue easily, uh, but it still makes for some good fun, some great space opera, and that's what this is one hundred percent. Just every emotion, every thought on their sleeve, spoken aloud or thought aloud. Uh, it also saved the money on animation because they didn't have to move his mouth every single time he wanted to say something. You just knew he's thinking these things. What if I? I don't know who I am. Where am I going? It's, I just remembered where I'm from. What I, what my purpose is. And like you can, he doesn't, they don't have to move, the, animate the mouth. You can just, it's, he's thinking. So that's fun. So, uh, it's, this is good fun. I'm actually going to, yeah, I, I should have done this a long time ago, but I was waiting for this to be selected. I am going to watch the next 10 episodes. There's unfortunately only 10 more in this little corner of the Marvel Universe. And as far as I can tell, the Fantastic Four does not show up. This is intentionally separated from the animated shows uh, that had come before. There's no Spider-Man or Fantastic Four or Avengers. This is fully cosmic. And being that it was so divorced from everything else in the Marvel Universe, might have been the reason why it only lasted one season. I don't know. And this is 1998, so it's we only had when it came to major like media blade at this point uh, we did not have the x-men yet there was no spider-man movie we everything we knew from marvel was in the comics and the animated series so that's the fact that they took a chance on this is kind of fantastic it's worth checking out if you're a marvel fan let's pick tomorrow's episode 125 <clears throat> Come on. Right. We're shot at. Oh, speaking of Marvel Studios. All right. The 120s and early 130s are all documentaries about the different Marvel Studio things on that came out in uh, the films and the TV shows. And this is one of the TV shows. Uh, I, I, I was gonna. I want to watch them. I want to. I just never take the time myself just to go. I think I'm gonna watch the, this documentary about a show that I watched three years ago. Uh, I'm just never gonna do that. But if this tells me, I'm, I have to do it. This is just the way it works. So this time around, and we have a lot more. And there's some that are not even listed here yet. That I'm gonna be adding to the next iteration when this quarter ends because uh, I missed out. On and being that we're so there's so few newer stuff being added as compared to the 90 things I go through every three months gotta gotta have more of this stuff in here anyway all that to say Marvel Studios assembled the making of Hawkeye so we're gonna get to see behind the scenes on the Hawkeye series season one I don't know if we'll ever get another season 
but if it is, it's probably going to be Kate Bishop focused. Marvel Studios Assembled, The Making of Hawkeye, and the next Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.